Do those creepy brains again. Anyway, so it was cool to be a citizen, but most people in Rome were not. They had to do something to keep those people from whining too much. Imagine that when you get home today there is a nicely dressed man standing at the front door. He tells you that he spoke to the bank and bought your house, so he now owns it. He tells you there will be some new rules and you'll have to follow them. You'll have to pay rent too, but he isn't going to kick you out. You walk in, and the first thing you see is a brand new 60-inch plasma TV with his box 360 hooked up to it. The guy tells you there is a setup like this in every room. How would you feel about this situation? The situation in the empire was surprisingly similar. They provided lots of entertainment free for anyone living in the empire, even if they weren't citizens. The goal was to keep the people happy and distracted. If people are busy having fun they ignore the problems going on around them. Think about it. The main form of entertainment was the gladiator fights. You think people today are too into violence? We're nothing compared to those Romans. Almost all gladiators were slaves. They were trained to fight to the death and they didn't do it by choice. When you've got a 50-50 chance of dying it isn't something you really want to do. They started off fighting against animals like lions and bears, but eventually they were fighting other gladiators. If you were really good you could actually earn your freedom and become fairly rich. Still, the risk was incredible. Of course, we live in a modern, sophisticated civilization so we'd never do anything like that. I mean come on, putting two men in a cage and watching them beat each other until they're unconscious? That is just crazy, right? Well... Okay, maybe we're not so different. Answer this question on your notes. How is ultimate fighting like the gladiators, and how is it different? Our final highway for Rome will be government. I know we skipped economics, but we'll actually talk about the Roman economy in later units this year. We're really going to just focus on one Roman leader, Constantine. But first we need to understand the two main types of governments we'll be talking about this year. There are republics, where leaders make decisions, based on public consent, usually by looking at their votes. The other form, which was far more common in history, was an empire. That is a civilization ruled by one supreme leader who usually could not be voted out. He made all decisions on laws. Which of these two would we be today? Yes, of course, we are a republic. For hundreds of years Rome was a republic, and one of the only ones in the world at that time. Eventually the people demanded a change. The Senate had its power taken away, and an emperor was put into power. The people of Rome wanted to become an empire. They wanted one person making all the decisions. Why would anyone possibly want that? The reason is actually very simple. One person can make decisions faster than a bunch of people arguing over things. Rome was being attacked, and they wanted to deal with it quickly. What truly held the Roman government together was the incredible military. The people felt that an emperor could use it better than a constantly arguing senate. The Roman military was the world's best for a very long time. They were incredibly disciplined soldiers at a time in history when most militaries were just a bunch of dudes with farm tools for weapons. They had specifically designed weapons or armor. Beyond their equipment was their incredible training. Roman military units trained as a group for years. Each man was responsible for his unit, there was no army of one. This army allowed the empire to expand by force when necessary. There's a reason the Roman Empire was so huge and this is it. The army was needed to fight off barbarians, people who didn't speak the Roman language of Latin. As the empire grew they decided to let the barbarians stay on their lands as long as they paid taxes and served the Roman government. Many of these barbarians were forced to join the army. While this made the army stronger it also brought their main enemy into their camp. As these barbarians got more and more angry problems started to rise within the military. So, for all your future emperors out there, here's a tip. Don't put your main enemy into your own army. 
it just isn't good business. Now enjoy the rest of this commercial. Nah, I'll use our new Capital One Prime Lock card. Introducing the new Prime Lock card from Capital One. It's set at Prime so you never have to worry about your interest rate again. Check your mailbox for details. What's in your wallet? <laughs> Oss Weed, story time, my favorite. This is the story of Emperor Constantine. The story of Constantine starts 300 years before he was born. It begins when Jesus was crucified in Judea, a Roman province in 33 AD. Christians, followers of Jesus, were treated very badly by the Roman Empire. This is a picture of Peter being crucified after Jesus was. Christians were blamed for problems in the empire including the burning of Rome. Christians would be thrown to lions in the Colosseum and sometimes set on fire and used as human torches. Of course, this didn't solve the empire's problems. As problems grew empire split into four, so it was be more easily controlled. This is when Constantine arrives on the scene. He is put in control of one region. He didn't want to just control one though, he wanted all of Rome to be his. So, he began to fight to control the others. Before one of the battles he looked into the sky and saw an image of Christ. Constantine was not a Christian, but he took the sign seriously. He had his men paint the symbol on their shield before the battle. He won a battle and became emperor. He then officially converted to Christianity and was baptized. Here's the main things from that story that you should have written down. I'm going to take a quick break while you get these and check out a quick video. Smell ya later. At the beginning of the 4th century AD, the Roman Empire faced one of the biggest crises in its history. It was now so huge that it had been carved up between four emperors, two in the west and two in the east. Like rats in a sack, they scrabbled for power. Tomorrow we march on Rome! I am Rome. Constantine is my enemy. Kill him, and we're free. One man would try to unite the Empire. One Empire! One God! One Emperor! The world will know the name of Constantine. Constantine would change the face of the Empire and leave the greatest legacy of any of Rome's emperors. A new world religion. The army of Rome marches in the name of the one true God! Christianity. Constantine became emperor and brought all of Rome back under the control of one man. He was one of the most important emperors in Roman history and not just for what he did for Rome. Constantine, quite seriously, changed world history. He was the first Roman emperor to accept Christianity. He made it a legal religion in the empire. He did more than that though, he ultimately got very involved with the church. He even built a new capital city which he named Constantinople, because he wanted the world to have a truly Christian city. What an awesome dude. 